This is late Sunday night, and I'm just not quite ready to go to bed, and I've been thinking about a story. I've wanted to tell this story for a while, but I'm waiting for the right conditions. Let me put my hearing aid on. I can talk better even when I wear my hearing aids. Oh, what a blessing these things can be, but they're also a pain in the butt. So, now I'm going to tell you my story. This has been a weekend of, I guess you might say, warnings. Weather conditions have not been the best no matter what part of the country you live in. We've all been watching the meteorologist on TV to see where the worst conditions are, and they seem to be anywhere and everywhere. If it's not rain and storms and wind, it's already snow. And the one I'm gonna talk about is snow. Now, I just looked out the window and there's a slight covering of snow on the ground. It looked like they may have even scraped the road up ahead of me. Now, I live right next to Richmond Road. Richmond Road is four lane. It's in the residential section, and it's one of the main drags in and out of the city. I can look right down onto the street and see what the road conditions are. So this go story goes back, um, I, I can't, I'm trying to think how many years. It's been about um, 46 years, long time ago. I worked out in the country on a two-lane road. It was a nine-mile drive from my house. Now, I have to give you a little background here so you can picture the situation. <clears throat> the street I lived on was just about two long blocks. It was not a through street, so you didn't see much traffic except for the homeowners. And when the weather was bad, I'd get up in the morning, I'd see snow on the ground. I'd say, oh my goodness, now what are the main roads like? Because my street was not going to be cleared. They didn't clear the streets that, that were not through streets. <clears throat> so I'm listening to the radio and trying to figure out, should I try to go to work? Should I not? Because nine miles is a long drive when you're driving through snow and ice. Well, there was no way to tell. So I got ready. I headed for work. Now, to get there, I had to go several miles. About five of those miles was on uh, New Circle Road. New Circle Road circles the city, all the way around the city, four lane. I get out of my subdivision off the main drag onto New Circle Road. It appeared to be like maybe two inches of snow. It's hard to tell. And the highway had not been cleared. It may have been scraped, I couldn't really tell, but you couldn't tell one lane from the other. You could not tell where the edge of the road was. And you know how sometimes uh, the edge of your road may have like a one or two inch drop if you happen to get off the main drag and you're over on the almost on the side of the road. You feel that, you can feel it 
with your tires, when your tires hit that little drop off. Well, I had hit that without realizing I was off the road, but it didn't affect my driving. I was being very careful, probably, I'm going to guess 25 miles an hour at the most. There was a pickup truck and another vehicle behind the pickup truck. They were following me. Now, I was looking way ahead at the car ahead of me to see if they were hitting any slick spots. You know how you do, you want to see if the car ahead of you hits a slick spot, you know to beware. It was a slight slope, one that you wouldn't visualize, but you feel it when you're driving. I'm driving along very carefully. And so far, everything's going okay. I'm not, almost not having to uh, use the accelerator because instead of the wheels taking me down the, the main road, it was like ice skating. That's pretty slick. And all of a sudden, the wheels turned. I mean, my car turned. I'm going this way, and my car turns to the right. To the right. That's where the guardrail was. Oh my gosh. If I go through that guardrail, it looked like it. 50 foot drop. There was a little black barn sitting down there. I could see it and I thought, oh no, I'm going to go right into that barn. I'm turning the wheel this way. I'm turning the wheel this way. Nothing, nothing. The car is going straight toward the guardrail. I have absolutely no control. But just before I reached the guardrail, I took hold of that wheel and I jerked it as hard as I could to the left. By chance, my car whipped around. I'm going back in the direction I should be going. I'm on the main road, right in the middle of two lanes. I skating and I'm just gripping the wheel. Okay, I'm okay so far. And I could see the pickup truck and the car behind me. And they were keeping their distance. And all of a sudden, my car whipped to the left. I had no control at all. I'm headed for the median. The median was wide. It dipped down, dipped down like this, down and up. I was going down that it's grassy area, but I was going down that little steep peak Nothing I could do. Brakes wouldn't work. You didn't even try the brakes. And I looked up the road. Here comes an 18-wheeler heading my direction. There was no doubt the man could not touch his brakes. No way could he touch his brakes. He couldn't do anything. I couldn't do anything. He coming down the highway this way. I'm coming this, this way. Down that bank. Right to the point. When I crossed that median onto the other side of the highway, 
my car would be directly in front of the 18-wheeler. Nothing I could do. Nothing he could do. Now, at this point, I'm going to ask you a question. Do you believe in miracles? I think sometimes we think we do. Sometimes we just aren't sure. I don't know. We've heard some pretty good stories that sounded like miracles. Okay. Here I go down that bank. My head hit the roof of the car. I'm bouncing up and down in that car. My hands on the wheels. I'm headed for the other side of the highway and I'm looking at the 18 wheeler. And all I could think was, this is it. This is it. I got to the bottom of the bank where it dipped. My front wheels went across that dip. I'm still. <laughs> and all of a sudden, the car jerked and stopped. Stopped. My head hit the roof of that car. The 18-wheeler went right on down the highway. And I'm still in the middle of that median. What happened? What happened? Well, I didn't have time to think about what happened. I grabbed my purse, threw open the car door at the same time, and jumped out of the car. And when I stepped out of that car, the man in the pickup truck was standing there with one arm reaching down to me and grabbed my hand and he pulled me up the bank. He had been watching every move I made knowing I had no control over my car. And he pulled to the side and he was there waiting when my car stopped. He grabbed my hand, jerked me up in front of him, and this is what he said. Young lady, the hand of God was over you right now. And I looked at him and I said, I know. I'd been saved from being under the hood of an 18-wheeler. My car had come down that bank to that dip. The front wheels went across the dip, but the bumper of my car in back hit the bank. And when it did, it held the rear wheels up. They were extended in the air. They didn't touch the ground. They couldn't move. My car had been stopped by that bank with my rear bumper. And you could see the Rear wheels extended in the air. They couldn't move. And that's what saved me from being splattered on the front of an 18-wheeler. That 18-wheeler went on down the highway. The man in the pickup truck said, where do you want to go? And I said, I've got 
nine miles out in the country. He said, I'll take you to work. A car was left sitting in the middle of the median. He drove me to work. I've thought of that many times. I've always believed it was a miracle that I was saved that day. I'm sure many of you can tell similar stories. You've got situations where near death, no hope, no way out, and only a miracle would save you. You know me, I get emotional. And I think that was 46 years ago. I'm still here. I'm still here. And how many times I've thought, why did the Lord save me that day? What did he have planned for me? I'm still asking that same question. And when I think about it, look where I am now. I'm talking to you. Are you in Ireland? Are you in Argentina? I got a message from someone in Argentina yesterday. My sister was surprised. I said, I've got a message from a viewer in Argentina today. Tomorrow, it might be Australia, Canada. I can, I've got several viewers from Canada, Ireland, England, Scotland, Wales. I can go down the list of countries that my videos are being seen. My voice is being heard. And to think that 46 years ago, my wife, my, excuse me, my life could have been wiped out by snow and ice. I don't know if this is a story you can appreciate or not, but when I see the snow coming, I'm reminded, always reminded of how blessed I should be, that I'm here and I can talk to you and I can tell you my story. Now, I've had other accidents in my car but only two in the snow. And that one was the miracle. So I hope you appreciate this story. And when you get out in your car, and I know some of you, you have to, your jobs depend on it, you have to be there. Especially if you work in the medical field, you're gonna be the first one going to work in the morning. And you just count on the Lord to take care of you. Me, it's one of the reliefs of retirement. When I retired, I said, when it gets bad, the weather is bad, the streets are slick, snow, ice, storms, I won't be going anywhere. I'm going to stay home. I'm not going to have that fear following me in my car to work every day. I can sit home and look out the window and watch the snow coming down and see how pretty my neighborhood looks when it's covered in snow. I hope you can do the same thing. And those of you who have to be out in the weather, be extra careful. Be very careful. 
because you don't know when the same thing could happen to you that happened to me and you had no control. No control whatsoever. There's nothing like turning a car, a steering wheel, and your wheel don't turn. Nothing happened. And you're going straight ahead toward a guardrail. You see a barn 50 feet below you, and you don't know if you're going to end up in that barn upside down, sideways, or even alive. Just let this be a warning to you. So you have a good day tomorrow. Take care. And if it's snowing where you are, I hope you're enjoying the snow, not having to fight the snow. Snow is just part of our lives. We have to live with it. Sometimes we enjoy it. Other times we hate it. And I want to be in the position of enjoying it. And if it, sway, if it snows enough, I want to be able to make a snowball. Love to make a snowball again. It's been a long time since I've done that. Hope you can do the same thing. And you have a good night. I'll see you later.